Lesson 4.5, Word Problem Solving, Multiply Money Using Bar Models. Remember, there are links in the description to help you if you need them. We can use the strategy Draw a Diagram to help us solve a decimal multiplication problem. A diagram, such as a bar model, can help us organize the information so we can understand the steps we need to take to solve the problem. We're going to solve seven word problems in this video about multiplying money using bar models and multiplying decimals. For an equation such as 3 times $2.50 plus $4, we would represent it with a bar model putting each amount into its own box. We have 3 times $2.50, so there are 3 boxes that contain $2.50. We have a fourth box for the $4 that's being added. And the diagram shows each money amount represented in a box. This will help us know if our answer is reasonable. We do 3 times $2.50, which is equal to $7.50. We add the $4, it's $11.50. We can represent different groups of money amounts by using more than one bar model. Emma bought three candy bars for $1.25 each, and two bottles of juice for $1.60 each. How much did she spend? We represent the candy bars in three boxes that each have $1.25 in them. We represent the two bottles of juice with two boxes that each have $1.60 in them. Our equation is three times $1.25, which is $3.75, plus two times $1.60, which is $3.20. We add the two amounts together, and we know she spent $6.95. So here it's showing that the notebooks are $1.75 each, sets of markers are $5.25 each, but it's not telling us how much the price for a box of crayons is. It says Emma bought two notebooks, two sets of markers, and a box of crayons for $16.30. How much did the crayons cost? It's not giving us the price of the crayons. So we think we can find the price of two notebooks plus two sets of markers and subtract that amount from the $16.30, the amount she spent. Two notebooks, they're each $1.75, so we have two boxes for the two notebooks. Two times $1.75 is $3.50. Two sets of markers, we have two boxes that each have $5.25 in them. Two times $5.25 is $10.50. We add them together and get $14. So we know the two notebooks and two sets of markers are equal to $14. We know she spent $16.30. We draw a long bar for that. And for the notebooks and markers, it was $14. We draw a bracket for the difference. The difference between the total spent and the notebooks and markers. We subtract and get $2.30. We know the crayons must have cost $2.30. Sophia has $32.80 saved in a jar in January. By March, the jar contains two times as much as she had in January. And between March and September, she adds a total of $58.40. If Sophia never takes money from the jar, how much will be in the jar? And we think March is compared to January. It's not telling us how much March is, but we know January is $32.80, and we know by March it's two times as much. So, this is how much she had in January, but by March, this is how much was in the jar, two times $32.80. By September, it was the amount she had by March plus $58.40. We do two times $32.80, which is equal to $65.60. We add the $58.40, we make sure our decimal points are lined up nice, and we get $124. So we know Sophia will have $124 in the jar. Now be careful. There is one, two, three, four, five boxes that contain $32.80, but our equation is not five times $32.80 
plus the extra $58.40, it's only two times $32.80 plus the $58.40. For this right here, this by September amount, this was January, and by March, the jar had two times January. So by March, this is how much was in there. Then by September, we added the $58.40. So we have two boxes that each have $32.80 in them, plus the amount she added by September, the $58.40. She has $124 in her jar. This problem differs from the one with the notebook, the markers, and the paint set because this was the price of the notebook, this was the price of the markers, and this was the price of the paint set, and we wanted to know how much she spent in all, so we needed to do seven times $1.75 and then add the $5.30 to find how much she spent in all. For this problem, this is how much she had in January, and then by March, she had two times as much, so this is gone. This amount is gone because now this is how much is in the jar. And by September, this is also gone because we're representing it as this amount by March plus the $58.40 she added in September. Do you see the difference between the two problems? In August, Sanjay paid $16.90 for internet service. His electric bill was $51.37 more than his internet service. And his grocery bill was five times as much as his electric bill. So how much did Sanjay spend on groceries in August? We know he paid $16.90 for internet service, and his electric bill is being compared to his internet bill. It was $51.37 more. So we can add to find the amount of the electric bill, the internet service plus the extra amount. That equals $68.00 and 27 cents when we add them together. It says his grocery bill was five times as much as his electric bill. If that's his electric bill, we do $68.27 times five. We represent it with a bar model that has five boxes that each have $68.27 in it. That's five times the electric bill. Five times seven is 35. We regroup the three and put the five down. Five times two is 10 plus three more is 13. We regroup the one and put the three down. Five times eight is 40, plus that one regrouped one is 41. We regroup the four and put the one down. Five times six is 30, plus four more is 34. We get $341.35. So the one equation to fit this problem would be $16.90 plus $51.37 for the electric bill times five. And remember to use a dollar sign in your answer and to label the answer as groceries or whatever it is that we're counting. Let's try some higher order thinking skills. We can see that this problem involves a table. So let's look at the table first to become familiar. It says candy prices. Kit Kat is $1.49. Snickers is $1.15. Milky Way is 95 cents, and Hershey's is $1.29. It's telling us Bob bought two candy bars for $2.44. If he did not buy a Hershey's bar, which two candy bars did he buy? So we think we need to find a combination of two candy bars that will total $2.44 that cannot include a Hershey's bar. We try different combinations. If we add a Kit Kat and a Snickers, we get $2.64. That's too high. It's supposed to be $2.44. When we add Snickers and Milky Way, we get $2.10. That's too low. When we try adding the Kit Kat and the Milky Way, we do get $2.44. And we did not use the price of the Hershey bar. So yes, we know Bob bought a Kit Kat and a Milky Way. So for representing multiplication with bar models, each amount gets its own box. Two times $4.99, we have them in two boxes. Three times $4.99, we now have them in three boxes. 
they each get their own box. If we have three times $4.99 plus $3.15, we now have $4.99 in three boxes for three times and an additional box to add the $3.15. If we have three times $4.99 minus $3.15, we now have a bar showing three times $4.99 and then we have another row for what we're subtracting, the $3.15, we draw a bracket down here to show the difference. 3 times $4.99 is equal to $14.97. We subtract $3.15 and this difference is $11.82. So make sure as you're using bar models that each amount will get its own box. And remember, like I always say, we can turn a sheet of lined paper sideways to keep place values in their correct column. In our next lesson, 4.6, we're going to be multiplying decimals by decimals with a 100 square model. I hope I'll see you there. And I think you can do this. Just keep remembering that each amount is going to get its own box in the bar model. Stay safe. Stay well. Have a great day. Bye.